Hey everyone, today we're going to check out the Pandora Sex Squared Saga 8001. It's a family board with either 6800 games or 8000 games. The only difference between these two models is the size of the micro SD, which is 64 gig or 128 gig. The one we have here is the 8000. If we open up the case, we can see it has a passive cooler. The internals match the mini box that we looked at earlier on this channel. This means it's an 812 SoC. CPU, quad core, 2 gigahertz. GPU, Mali 450 MP8. Memory, 1 gigabyte. These specs match the Pandora Games 3D and the 3D Plus, and the S812 variants. The main difference between this and the Mini is the daughter board. You can connect your regular Pandora controls harness to the pins, and there's also an extra set of USB ports. Unlike the 3D or the Saga systems, the microSD was not full of glue. There is also Wi-Fi on the board and two little connectors for more fans. On the back we have connectors for 100 megabit LAN, SPDIF, audio, HDMI out, power, power switch, volume adjustment, a settings button, and two USB ports visible. The system is located on the onboard NAND. All of the games are located on the micro SD, but all of the data is encrypted. The heatsink is attached to the top half of the case. If you want to put this box in one of your enclosures, you can do so. But as the connectors at the back are non-standard, it may be a difficult fit. It's also a tight squeeze on this angled short plank. The firmware is essentially the Pandora Games 3D from last year with a new skin. You can select through system category, recently played games, and there's a search button too. Within the game menu, we have FBA, four different versions of MAME, Sony PlayStation, PSP, Dreamcast, Master System, Mega Drive, N64, Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and PC Engine. As there's 8,000 games on here, we see many duplicates, many hacks, and also, because there's so many games, it slows down the menu. If there are fewer, it would speed it up a lot. If you want to add to the list, you can go into the Settings menu and enter the Game Market. Here you can download a ton of games, but they're all badly named and have had no look with the video thumbnails. We can also add them by using a USB stick or by using Pandori. As we can use up to four players on some games, we can assign which controller does what. Unfortunately, the button configuration is a bit of a bust. We can change the video filter to have a scan line, ugly paint mode, or off. The video output is at 720p, and aspect ratio cannot be changed in this menu. You can change it if you jailbreak, which is possible with this board. The PSP fix is also compatible. Time for some gameplay. First one, Tekken 6. Runs great. You can also play two player on this title. PlayStation 1 games run at a good speed, but you cannot save and the buttons are incorrectly configured. N64 also good speed, bad controls. At least save games work. Most of the systems have load and save state.
At stock, Dreamcast cannot load or save games from the memory card. If you use the Pandora jailbreak, you can. This is Metal Slug 2 running at 200% core clock. Controller latency seems to be on par with the Saga systems. It's good guys. And Red Earth works here. How well does it run Mortal Kombat? Jailbreak gives us access to Android. And with this board, we have 2.2 gigabytes of free space in our data partition. This can be used to install Android APKs, or we could install cores for RetroArch so we can get more emulators on the system. So we can use Amiga, Naomi, Adamus Wave, the newest MAME, FB Neo, uh, Atari, um, and more. So getting back to the USB ports, you cannot use one set simultaneously with the other. Opportunity wasted. That means we'll still need to use the USB hub in order to get more than one control pad into the system. I could not get the official Sony pads working, PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 1 Classic, but these fakes, no problem. Wired Xbox 360 and the Logitech pads work fine. In conclusion, this is a great system to have. It's one of the fastest Pandora boxes on the market with low controller latency, fully compatible with Pandora. It's not the safest box on the market as this one has no recovery menu. And then USB ports, what a waste. Either way, it's a great box to buy, but this chip is getting old now and one gigabyte memory, we need more for our retro box. More is better. More please. I don't mean more games, damn it.